journal junkies and happy planners, I'm Kelsey Lee and this is the Scribbled Bookcase. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about collections. If you're new to the bullet journal system, you might not know what a collection is. You might not even know what a bullet journal is. If that's the case, I'm going to link down below Ryder Carroll's website and I'll also link down Boho Berry's website. Um, she's probably the one who like is most well known within the community besides obviously the creator writer Carol. I'm gonna skip over what a bullet journal is and just talk about what collections are since that's my topic for today. So a collection sounds really complicated but I promise you it's not. It's basically just a list. It's a collection uh -huh, right, of lists and ideas and things that are related to a specific topic or a theme. So you might have a theme of reading, or maybe you have a grocery list that you do every single week, right? And you get the same things. Instead, you could create a collection for those items in your bullet journal so that they're always readily available to you. And I'm going to show you my bullet journal and the collections I have to give you an idea of what I'm talking about and hopefully make it more clear how you can use the collection system within your own bullet journal. All right, so welcome to my bullet journal. So as I talked about in my previous video in which I walked through my setup for my bullet journal and my months of July and August, I'll link that down below. I use obviously a six ring binder and because I use a six ring binder, I can move things around to my heart's content and thus can have different sections for all of the different bullet journal components. So I have my dailies up here in the front as you can see here. So there's a little sneak peek of some of my August spreads and that kind of thing which I'll be doing a video on in the near future because August is almost over guys. I can't believe it. The summer is drawing to a close. But I have those up here in my calendar up here. All that stuff that I use daily and then in my back I have my collections which is what I'm gonna walk through today so I have my little divider here that comes with the recollections planner which is what I use it's from Michael's craft store and my first page it says make life awesome it's just kind of like a all right we're jumping into collections now so when I flip that page I jump into kind of my first collection here which is an affirmations collection. I just drew a sun. A lot of people do this method of the sun and the different rays of words with their gratitude pages and you could do that as well. You could even have a collection of gratitude if that's what you wanted to do. But mine is affirmations so it says I am in the middle of the sun in different fonts that I chose to write in and then different things that I feel I am or that I want to be. So it says things like, I am the master of my habits, I am fearless in all I do, I am true to my own path, things to just give you inspiration. And then, as I said, using the six ring binder, one of my favorite parts of using the six ring binder is that I can have my collections in specific sections. So when I have a lot of collections that relate to a similar topic, I will form those collections into an even bigger collection with a themed heading. So in this case I have business and finances and so I just created a cover page for this section. It says you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. And I really like that quote. I think it speaks a lot to you know what we need to aspire to. So when I turn the page I have my first collection. You could call this a tracker. Um, a tracker is just something that you use to obviously keep track of different things like habits, activities, or income, things like that, but I just consider it a collection since it's not something I would keep in my weekly or monthly setups, though there are some people I know who do keep a monthly income tracker that they just create a new income tracker for every month. You could do that as well. Mine I just want to be an ongoing thing because I'm not sure how much variation there will be month to month and obviously I haven't started using it yet because I just started my new job so I didn't want to start it until I get my first paycheck and what I have at the top here is the date that I bought something the source so if I got it from like Amazon that's what I would write there the item that I bought the amount I paid the way that I paid for it whether it was cash credit or debit the balance at the end of paying for that item and then whether I needed it or wanted it and the nice thing about the need and want 
is you can kind of get a sense of how much you're splurging on things that you didn't necessarily need and that way maybe you can plan for the future to be more wise about your money and your spending. So my next page is blank because I have a feeling that I'm going to need more room than this, obviously. So I wanted to have this page blank so that I can just continue the spending tracker as I need more room for it. So that's a really good tip if you're doing your bullet journal collections the way I am in a six ring binder. Make sure that you're not putting another item on the back of a page that's going to be ongoing. Because if you do that, like if I put this page here, then it would be right in the middle of trying to start even more pages of my income tracker, which is not something I want. So I just leave this blank so that I can continue it as I need. And then my next page is debt free by 2017. And the goal here is to pay off my one credit card. So I just drew up my plan up until 2017 is when I want to have that balance back down to zero. And so I just have August through December and I drew little doodles uh, next to it just to kind of represent each month and make this page more fun since it's not a very fun topic, right? And so yeah, so I just have um, how much I plan on paying every month and then how I envision that amount that I owe going down until eventually I reach zero dollars at the end of December, which means 2017 will be a new year and a fresh start. And then following that, I have my work hours. So I like to keep track of the hours that I'm working. I don't work somewhere where I like clock in and out. So I have this little sheet written up for myself with the day that I worked, the start time, the end time, and then the hours that I work. So at the end of my two weeks for my pay period, I can put in all of the hours by just looking at my handy dandy work hours collection. And so that goes on for a few pages. It says you get what you work for, not what you wish for. All I do is work, 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 work. And then just another page of it. And I'll probably need more pages of this as well, but I think that's good for the beginning of it. And then my next page fits into business and finances because it's things that I want to buy. So gift ideas, these are things that I want to get for others. So I have what, who slash occasion, and success. So did I give it to them and did they like it? My next page is I want it, so gift ideas for me. And then my other list here is things to buy. This is more things that are kind of necessary. Um, in, necessary in a sense, right? It's not like food and clothing and things that I absolutely have to buy. But it's things that are practical and I will need. So, for example, when I went to Costa Rica, I needed new booties for scuba diving. And so that showed up on this list. My next one is my Etsy shop. So I'm going to link that down below because we just started it. My mom and I are just beginning an Etsy shop. She is really into upcycling and I am starting to get into hand lettering and that kind of thing. So if those sorts of things interest you, home decor and the like, do check out our link down below. It's Curb to Superb Designs. Anyways, so this is my Etsy shop to-do list, things that I need to get done for the shop. And then on the back I have merch ideas, so as ideas come to me for things that I want to create, that's what goes here. And so that completes my business and finance collections. So my next set of collections are my reading and writing collections. Obviously, I am an avid reader and I'm also an author. And so I have here my reading and writing. So this is a cover page that I made and I just used this really cute public library card. I actually got this in a set of pocket cards. So they look like this. Sorry, I bumped you again. I keep doing that. <laughs> but yeah, so they look like this. They're super cute. And you can get these from Planner 365. They're available on Amazon and most craft stores. So yeah, so I have a public library. I just wrote in fake dates, drew this little bookcase, reading and writing, little doodles. And then it flips up. Da -da -da! And so this is called a tip-in. And I learned that... I don't know if it's actually called a tip-in or if she just calls it that, but Allie Brown is my favorite journalist on YouTube, so I'm going to link her down below. She has a great video about tip-ins because she does this all the time in her journal. They're just so fun. Da -da -da. But yeah, so when I flip it up, 
Underneath I have this quote. It says, one must always be careful of books and what is inside them for words have the power to change us. That is one of my all-time favorite quotes from one of my all-time favorite authors. 10 points to Gryffindor for whoever knows the author of that quote. I only have 10 written down right now, but I have another tip in. So below my 10, I have spots for 35 others. The great thing about tip ins is if you use washi like I did, I can just take this out and cover this up and reuse the page to just add on to my TBR pile. So if I've read all 35 books that I had written down here, unlikely to happen anytime soon, but if that happened, I could just take this off, cover that up, and create a whole new TBR list right on the same page. So use tip-ins um, for lists that you know you're going to change over and over again. You could also use post-it notes. I've seen people put like, this is huge, obviously you wouldn't use this whole stack, but just put like a chunk of post-its right in their bullet journal, and then they'll just take out the post-its as they changed that list. So that's a great way to do that as well. And then on this page I have my bookcase of To Be Read and I really like this format of doing it. And so what I use this for is basically anytime somebody recommends a book to me or I see a book or find out about a book somehow that I really am interested in reading, I'll write it down over here. And I just color them in as I read them. This is not my idea at all. A ton of people have done this and have done it much more beautifully, beautifully, yeah, beautifully than I have. Uh, you can check out Pinterest and Instagram and find all sorts of amazing spreads, collections, or whatever you want to call them. Just like this. But you might not find one as beautiful as this. I bumped you again, I'm sorry. This page is my favorite. And so this is my books of 2016. It's a list of all of the books here in red on this beautiful book that I drew. All the books that I read in 2016. And then next to them are the page numbers of that book because at the end of 2016, I'm going to add up all of the pages that I had read within this time period. And the nice thing about this book tracker collection that I have down here is it really gives you a sense of how wide your gamut is in terms of what you're reading. So down here I keep track of the fiction genres that I'm reading. So I assign each book more than one genre, you know, depending on what it is. So for example, The Shack by W.M. Paul Young, which I read recently, is a contemporary book. It's a mystery slash thriller, and it's also other because it's a Christian novel. And so that was something that fit into multiple categories, and then I have adult and YA books. So I've been reading a lot more adult lately just because that's what's been intriguing me and keeping me interested. I have nonfiction at the bottom because I do read nonfiction as often as I can as well. And then star rating over here, pretty straightforward. I just keep tallies for what star rating I would give each of the books. And the author gender, because I want to make sure I'm reading authors with different mindsets and backgrounds, and so I want to make sure that I'm kind of being equal in my distribution for all of these things. So that's that page. And then here I have my notes and thoughts on a specific book. So these pages, the notes and thoughts pages, came with my recollections planner. And so that's really nice because I just moved to this over into my reading pages because I had been taking some notes on The Shack by W.M. Paul Young. And then my next part of my reading is every book I've ever read in one place. And so kind of true, kind of not. This is not a list of every single book I've ever read because I don't remember every single book I've ever read. But I did the best I could. And so I got up to 262 is what I could think of in my head and based on Goodreads and my bookshelves. I'm sure I read more than that, but it's what I forgot. And the nice thing about this is from now on, I'm going to keep a running list of all of the books I read. So, you know, when I'm 65 years old and retired and my grandchildren are looking at my bullet journal, because of course they will, they can be like, wow, my grandma was super well read. And I'll be like, yeah, she was. So that's great. And then my next set of collections are my writing collections. So as I've mentioned, as some of you may know, I am an author of the Circle and Cross trilogy. And 
I guess I'll show you the book for some self-promotion that I should probably be doing anyways. I'm super bad at self-promotion, but here we go. I wrote this book. It's called If I Resist. It's book two in the Circle and Cross trilogy. If I Fall is book one. I'm going to link both of those down below. These are historical fiction, paranormal, young adult books. So if you're interested in that or know anyone who is, I highly encourage you to check them out because I wrote them. And that's pretty cool, right? Cool. All right. That out of the way, let's talk about the writing process. So I'm currently working on book three and it's been a slow process and I have needed some motivation and thus I turned to my bullet journal. My bullet journal lays out, as you can see, my goals for Circle and Cross book three. And so I've just kind of set up the word count that I want to hit for each month in this plan that I've made for myself including, of course, NaNoWriMo. Anybody out there doing NaNoWriMo, let me know in the comments down below. But, so this is my setup, and hopefully I'll be checking off all of those boxes and getting the book to my publisher by the beginning of the new year. That's the goal. And to kind of track my progress in reaching those goals, I have a writing log. And so here I keep track of the date that I'm writing, the start and end time of my writing session, the word count that I reached at the end of that session, and then the type of progress. So here I track what chapter I was working on and how many words I wrote in that time period. And the nice thing about keeping track of the time is you can get a sense of what time of the day works best for you. So I've learned well, actually, I haven't learned much yet because I'm not writing enough. But hopefully I will come to learn, you know, maybe I'm really productive in the mornings or maybe I'm really productive in the evenings. And once I get a sense of that, I can really target those areas for my writing. And then my last section for my writing is my writing notes. So I just drew this cute little notepad thing and then if... An idea comes to me, it's the middle of the night, and I don't want to try and reach for my laptop and write it down. I can just jot down the idea in here, and it just continues on the back. And this says, fill your paper with the breathings of your heart. Super cute. And then my last section of my bullet journal collections is just kind of miscellaneous right now. So these are any pages that don't quite fit into one of the other sections and don't have enough pages to create a whole section for themselves. So my first one is Wildlife of Costa Rica. I went to Costa Rica in June and it was beautiful guys, so beautiful. Highly recommend you check it out. I am a biologist along with my boyfriend. We are both super into wildlife and checking out all the animals and he loves reptiles and amphibians and that's what we do when we go on vacation or do anything. We're always out in the wilderness looking for things. So I keep track of that in my bullet journal. And so, yeah, I just have insects, marine life, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. And so I write down then every animal or insect, whatever it was, as we saw them in their color-coded color. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then drew little pictures of the animals that like stuck out to me the most or I thought were most pretty. And so that was a really fun page to do, and it's really cool just to, like, ah, Costa Rica, and look back on it and have those memories. I really like doing this type of page, even if you're not into wildlife. Having a page like this for your travels can be really nice. So maybe you want to keep track of, like, the different types of buildings you see because you're really into architecture. Or, if you're a foodie like me, maybe you want to keep track of all of the different delicacies you eat in a new place. So that's a really cool way of tracking those sorts of things. My next collection is my Couch to 5K. Couch to 5K is a jogging running app to get you ready for a 5K if you're a couch potato like me. And so it's, you know, not going too well because this week two happened like a month ago. But I'm hoping to get back on track with week three um, now that I'm kind of settling into more of a routine. And so yeah, so we're gonna use this. That'll that'll happen soon, hopefully. Okay, and then my next one is my successful recipes. So if I make something that tastes good, I just write down the basic ingredients for it, um, and I can figure out amounts and stuff later, just based on intuition. But that's what I try and track here. 
And then my next one is for sending lots of love. So these are just addresses for different people in my life, which is why they're covered up, because, you know, I don't think they want surprise mail from you guys. No offense. And then, so I have letter writing is the only device for combining solitude with good company, and I think that's a great quote. And that just continues on this page, this cute little letter here. And then my next one is my vision board. So I just uh, wrote on the front this make this moment count and then have my vision board in the middle. So all of the things that I want to do in life, dreams, goals, etc. A brain dump is just what it sounds like, but I really hate that term. So I'm probably going to change this page and make a new one that sounds prettier because I just I hate the word dump like what a terrible word. Everybody hates moist, but I think dump is way worse. This is where you just dump any ideas that come to mind. Basically, these are things that don't belong on my to-do list because they don't need to be done right away, but they are things that I would like to get taken care of at some point in time. So that's where these things go. So any just random thoughts trickling around, hanging out in your head, you put in your brain dump and leave it there and then probably never look at it again. So, congratulations everybody, you made it to the end of my collections. So. I really love my collections. I think they're super fun to make. They really do work in terms of keeping you motivated and collecting memories and just making you feel like, I don't know, making you feel productive and fun and whimsical and like you're getting stuff done. That's how I feel. So, if you enjoyed my video here, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What collections do you have? Are there collections that I'm missing that you think I should definitely get my hands on? I'm always looking to create new ones. And I'd also love to find out what videos you'd like me to make next. So let me know all of those thoughts in the comments and I'll be seeing you in the near future. Probably next week because next week is the last week of August and I gotta start setting up September. So I'll see y'all then. Have a blessed day. Bye!